You have been lied to. As a software engineer in the United States, you're told that if you just keep learning the next framework, grinding your tickets and staying quiet, your career will be safe. But deep down, you know better. Your smartest friends are already getting laid off over a 15 minute Zoom call. Entire teams are vanishing overnight replaced by either offshore H1B visa talent or a few lines of AI code. And that gut feeling that you're one reorganization away from being erased from the entire playbook? Well, it's not just paranoia, it's actually reality. And I lived it. I had the quarter million dollar salary. I had that prestigious job title. But I remember seeing myself being billed out to a client for about 18.50 per hour, and I was getting less than 10% of that on my hourly wage. And I found myself asking, is this really it? I mean, I was solving million dollar problems, but it felt like I was living paycheck to paycheck, especially in California, golden handcuffed by a salary. And for a huge number of engineers in the United States, these golden handcuffs are literal. And I realized, I mean, the system wasn't broken. It was just working exactly as it was designed. It just wasn't designed for me. You see, we are all trained to be world-class technicians. But being a great technician is the very thing that keeps you trapped. So this video is not about how to climb the corporate ladder faster. It's about how to get off of it completely. I'm going to give you the three-part operating system to make the shift from technician to what I call the operator. The mindset that lets you reclaim your leverage and build a career that actually feels like yours. So when a technician wants to become more valuable, what's the very first thing that they do? Well, they learn a new tool, a new framework, a new language. But what if adding more tools is the very thing that's keeping you stuck? For years, we were told to be I-shaped. In other words, a deep specialist. And this feels safe, but it's actually incredibly fragile. So if you think back to the world-class Flash developers of 2008, by 2018, the skill was literally worthless. So then the advice was to become T-shaped. So one deep specialty plus a shallow understanding of a few other areas. But in today's market, the shallow part of that T, so writing basic SQL queries, let's say, setting up a simple CI CD pipeline, it's all being rapidly commoditized by AI. So the T has now become a target as well. And this is where the operator's mindset is actually different because operators don't just add more tools, they build what I call a workshop. They create a system of assets and the foundation for that system is by becoming what I call pie-shaped. So instead of one deep specialty, you develop Two. So as an engineer who is an expert in both mobile development and growth marketing analytics, let's say, a developer who masters both backend systems and cloud security. Because when you have two deep skills, you're no longer solving just a technical problem. You're now solving a complex business problem. You move from being a replaceable cog in a machine to a more of a strategic problem solver whose value is far greater than the sum of its parts. You have leverage. Okay, that's all said and done, but what truly separates the engineer who gets stuck from the one who actually gets ahead? Because it doesn't matter if you learn these things, right? Well, the playbook that we're trained on as engineers tells us to get it perfect and be the best at our craft. And this makes us a great employee, but it's a liability when we need to create some real actual leverage. And I remember seeing this firsthand when I was a Fortune 500 software engineering manager with specifically, there were two engineers, let's call them Dave and Sarah. And Dave was the perfect technician. Sarah was an emerging operator. When a project was delayed, the director who was always under pressure would always ask for a status update and it would come to me. And Dave would always say, well, the API is malforming data. I have to refactor the service. And he was correct, but the director always looked frustrated and confused. He needed a business reason, not a technical one. Then when Sarah would speak up saying, let's say we can ship the feature this week, but it has a 60% chance of failing due to, let's say the Black Friday rush, or I can fix the core issue in two weeks, which will also cut our server costs by an estimated 300 grand a year. Sarah wasn't just shipping the code. She was selling the outcome, risk reduction and cost savings. And that is the operator's language. It's what I call business translation. Now, Sarah did this instinctively, but for the rest of us, there's a system that we can actually use and it's called the inverse resume exercise. So what you want to do is, well, first write down three projects that you've done. Second, for each specific project, write down the specific business result it created. So you're not going to say, well, I built an internal dashboard, but rather you can say I cut report time generation by 80%. Third, and this is the most important crucial part, ask yourself this question. Who else has this problem? and who would pay to get that outcome. Because when you do this, you stop thinking like an employee who completes tasks and you start thinking like an operator who solves valuable problems. So you've got the skills 
and now you know how to talk about them and you're ready to actually escape your nine to five. But 99% of engineers who actually try this make a fatal mistake that lands them in a situation that's even worse than their old job. Because what happens is they fall right back into the technician trap. They start freelancing by that hour, they replace their W-2 for a 1099, losing their health insurance, and they realize they just created a new job with even more Slack messages than before, and the constant fear that if they take a little vacation, the revenue will stop coming in. So the operator avoids this trap entirely because they understand a fundamental truth. You never want to sell your time. You want to sell a system. You don't want to freelance. You want to build what's called a Grand Slam offer. And currently in the United States, with its huge concentration of venture-backed businesses, this is the best market on the planet to actually do this in. A Grand Slam offer has four key components. First, it solves a clear, painful problem. So you don't ever sell features, rather you talk about the pain that the client already has. Second, it promises a tangible outcome. The result must be measurable and fast. Third, it has trust triggers. So you show this that this isn't your first rodeo using any past results, client testimonials, screenshots, whatever the case. And fourth is simplicity. Clients don't want a 14 step roadmap. They wanna know what happens, when it happens, and how they'll know that it worked. So to give you an example, the technician might say, I can help with anything data or backend related. But the operator who uses a simple prompt to actually create their offer will frame it like this. I help specific target niche solve a very painful problem such that they can get a specific result in a specific timeline. And that is how you really reclaim your leverage. You become pie-shaped, you master business translation, and you build a Grand Slam offer. And remember, these aren't just necessarily career tips. This is the blueprint for making the fundamental shift from technician to operator. And this is the same system that will set you free. Understand that you are not underpaid, you are under leveraged. If you've built complex systems for a tech giant, you can absolutely build a system that serves you. You just need the right playbook. So the frameworks in this video are part of the complete code to CEO accelerator. If you're serious about making this shift and want help installing this entire system in your life, I can help. The code to CEO accelerator gives you one-on-one -on -one coaching to build your offer and land your first clients. It also gives you a community of engineers on the same exact path. And of course, it gives you the entire repeatable playbook that has helped others hit 10 to $100,000 a month and finally leave their jobs, gaining the financial location and time freedom that they deserve. So if you are ready to stop trading your time for a salary and want to start building a business you truly own, click the link in the description below or go to code2co.com to apply directly. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good one.